The Formula 1 Championship stays at Silverstone for a special Grand Prix. To celebrate the sport being born in 1950, we stay at the home of British Motorsport for the 70th Anniversary Grand Prix. Let's take a look at the Drivers' and the Constructors' Championship. Formula One stays exactly where it is for a brand new race. To celebrate 70 years, it's the 70th Anniversary Grand Prix. It is the fifth stop on the 2020 calendar. After this, we've got the Spanish Grand Prix next weekend, a week off before Belgium, Italy and the Tuscany Grand Prix, followed by then the Russian Grand Prix, then we get Eiffel, and then we're into brand new territory in Portimao, Portugal, before Imola for the Emilia Romana Grand Prix is the last currently confirmed. Hamilton leads the Drivers' Championship 88 points to Bottas on 58 points after a dramatic race last Sunday. Verstappen in third on 52, Norris in fourth place seems to be holding off a fast-charging Charles Leclerc. Albon in sixth on 26, Perez on 22, Stroll, Ricardo, and Sainz rounds out the top 10. Ocon has 12 points, the same as Gasly in P11 and 12. Vettel still on the second page with only 10 points to his name. Two for, Giovin for Magnussen and Giovinazzi. One for Kvyat. No points yet for Raikkonen and Latifi, Russell or Grosjean. In the team's championship, well, that is Mercedes. 146 points to Red Bull 78. An absolute dominant performance for them. McLaren are in third on 50, seven points clear of, of Ferrari in fourth, racing points are point behind them in fifth place. Renault sixth, Alfa Torre seventh, Alfa Romeo eighth, Haas ninth on two, and still no points on the board for Williams in tenth. It's your Thursday weekend preview for the 2020 Grand Prix in Silverstone, titled the 70th Anniversary. Now, of course, we stay at the same track, which means it's the same as last weekend. So let's take a look around Silverstone with Lap Attack. <coughs> let's take a look at the Silverstone circuit in Great Britain. Three sectors, one of the flattest circuits on the calendar. Two DRS zones, speed trap down the hangar straight. 18 turns in total, minimal elevation change throughout. On board with the McLaren from last year, get a good exit out of the club corner and you're immediately across the control line. Head down towards turn one, Abbey, a quick flick to the right, full speed, lifting slightly in eighth gear through farm and into village, the heavy braking zone of turn three, down fourth gear, tight right again, lead you out wide to the loop section, turn four, tight left. Get the power on mid exit as you flick left once again through entry and down the Wellington Strait, open up the DRS and now defend from overtakes behind for the lap. Then keep the car as straight as possible. Hurt into Brooklyn's now. Down only to fifth gear. Throw the car into the left. Ride the curves at the exit. Get the car all straightened out before a quick flick right round into Woodlands. Up now towards Woodcut now. Flat out before the Cops corner. The fastest corner in Britain. Keep it flat out across the old start finish straight. Flick the car right before you head down towards Maggins and Beckett. Some of the most seductive corners in Formula 1 history over 70 years. Flick the car to the left, the right. Then do it all over again through Beckett. Driver's going to get this right once a weekend before into Chapel and the hangar straight for the second DRS zone. Long now as you head down towards Stowe Corner. Eighth gear flat out. Only drop two gears. Keep the car revs high up as you drop through Stowe. Downhill section of the track now. Pit lane entrance towards your right into the Vale chicane. Left, then right. Get the power on before the quick flick on turn 18 at Club Corner and you're across the control line. It's a fast and abusive circuit, but it's the home of British motorsport. I'm joined now by Megan Birch and Megan welcome to Silverstone for the 70th anniversary Grand Prix what a difference a week makes new race new title but still isn't it good to be at the home of Formula 1 where it was born to celebrate 70 years yes it really is a great thing to do do you think it's a bit weird that we've celebrated an anniversary with a Grand Prix? I mean, yes, we're in a weird situation with COVID, but this could have easily been called the Northamptonshire Grand Prix. Yeah, though, 
it's the seventieth anniversary. They've got to do something with it. Let's mark it anyway as we go along. Right, last weekend was an interesting race. Um, it took a while to get into it, but a lot of punctures on that last lap. And if I find something that's just alongside me here, uh, the Sun reporting it as lap of the gods. And if Megan uh, holds my microphone for me, uh, on the back page as well, it says only fools and horsepower. So a brilliant one there from uh, Ben Hunt, who's uh, at uh, the Sun. And I think it really was, Megan. It was Lap of the Gods, don't you think? Yes, it really was. Three punctures, though. There's got to be something wrong with the wheels and everything. I mean, even a wheel came off in the first thing. Everything has a wheel involved this weekend. Yeah, that race was a, a, a wheel event as well. Now, Danica Viat started it all. He had a puncture coming through Maggots and Beckett's, hit the wall hard. Um, he's all right, luckily, but the, sh- but the Pirelli investigated and today announced that it was the cause of a mechanical failure, not that caused the puncture. That's a bit of a worry, isn't it, for Alfa Torre? Yes, it really is a worry. Then, I mean, I think all teams should really be a little be bit worried worry. after last weekend. Yeah, and you going, these don't make for a dramatic race. The tyres are a compound softer than usual. They are the C2, which is now the hard. Last weekend, we had the hardest compound. That's going to be a worry. I mean, yes, we've seen that the C2 works and the C3, because they were last week's, but the new tyre, the C4, is only the second softest, and that could be an issue for qualifying and in the race as well. They could be the ones failing. It could be an issue, I agree. Yeah. Uh Lewis Hamilton, lap of the gods, we've already said that. Valtteri Bottas got that puncture on lap 52, got out of the points as well. Hamilton was able to coast around. Bottas scoring no points at the British Grand Prix just helps Lewis Hamilton rock it up in the championship. Is this Hamilton now a seven-time world champion? Possibly. I mean, if he doesn't win the next race and he's still fine, he's still champion leader. Yeah, it's a really unusual situation as well. Moving on to this weekend then. And all the stuff moving around it. Uh, Sergio Perez might still race this weekend. Uh, He's been isolated since that uh, positive test last week. But he is currently had his isolation time and might be able to race if he can provide a negative result to uh, COVID-19. That test has been taken today. We're expecting it tomorrow morning. But if not, Nico Hulkenberg would be in the race car as well. Hulkenberg didn't race last weekend. Some issue with the car, it wouldn't fire up. And now all of a sudden, Perez is allowed to come back. Is this going to be fair on Hulkenberg? No, I mean, he's went to all that trouble. Though I personally feel like Perez won't do it because even if it does come back negative, I mean, he should have a chance to recover. Mm, Indeed. He 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 said he had no symptoms, but I don't really believe that uh, to begin Mm. with. I think he's just putting on a brave face about it. Yeah, okay. Going forward as well. Uh, Charles Leclerc was uh, misquoted, uh, to be fair to say, in a German newspaper uh, saying that he didn't agree with kneeling on the grid because it affected, because of how the protest turned out violent. He has clarified himself and uh, we're going to read it to you now on the screen. So on Charles Leclerc's Twitter it says, uh, it is very sad to see how some people manipulate my words to make headlines, making me sound like a racist. I am not a racist, and I absolutely hate racism. Racism is disgusting. Stop putting me in the same group as these disgusting people that are discriminating others because of their skin colour, religion or gender. I am not part of that, and I never will. I've always been respectful to everyone, and that should be the standard in today's world. And whoever is using my image to promote their wrong ideas, please stop. I'm not into politics and I don't want to be involved in that. That was some interesting words with there, Megan, as well. And I think it's good that he's come out and clarified exactly what his viewpoint is on the situation after yeah. people sort of jumped on him straight away yeah, on he's Twitter. stopping it quite early. Just like, stop, I'm not that... Just leave it. Yes, exactly. And uh, it comes after last weekend where Formula 1 finally showed a not the greatest they could have done, but it was a move in the right direction with their end racism campaign and Lewis Hamilton kneeling on the grid, some of the other drivers kneeling, some not kneeling as well. Uh, That is still a hot topic in Formula One as well. And hopefully this weekend we see a united driver's front on some form uh, as well, because it needs to keep going. And I think Lewis Hamilton's doing right. that He's pushing it forward as much as he can, but uh, it's getting a bit now with Formula One drivers that saying, okay, we, we want to stop doing it now 
because they think it's done, but it's not done. That's because they are sort of isolated. It's only really at the moment drivers like, I want to say Lewis Hamilton, obviously, Sebastian Vettel, Lando Norris, George Russell, Danny Ricciardo, some of the ones who are in touch with the general world who are sort of having a more of a bigger impact than other drivers. So it's, it's an interesting take on the situation, but uh, hopefully it'll improve as we go further on. Looking ahead to this weekend, is it going to be another Mercedes dominance or a Red Bull going to come strong? Verstappen was five seconds away from winning the race last weekend, of course. Yeah, though I have a feeling it may be a Red, a Red Bull attempting to get dominant, so failing like they did last time. That's just a guess. Mm. I mean, they could win. I mean, for all I know, both Mercedes and it's Red Bull could have problems or crash out. Anything could happen. Yeah. It always does. A racing point driver could win. Exactly. It's not unlikely, is it, either? Uh, going forward then, uh, our coverage details this weekend. We are live for free practice one tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock in the morning. Uh, the Friday practice review will be at about 8 o'clock, followed by the Saturday practice review, the Sunday race preview, and the Sunday race review, and the Grand View podcast as well. It's going to be a fun one, Meg. So I want your Friday predictions. Who's going to do well? Who's not going to do so well? For some reason, I'm getting Joel's going to do well. Well, he was top uh, session last week, so exactly. could he do. seems to do better when it's never the race. Mm, I agree. Right, join us tomorrow then for all of the action. We'll be live with free practice one at 11 o'clock. From us all here, though, stay safe. Bye for now. <laughs>